Hi guys, my name is Megan with the blog WilsonHomestead.com and today I want to share with you a wonderful, fabulous beeswax candle recipe. I just love making candles. It's kind of the same feeling that I get when I'm baking bread or canning food. It's just something that I can do with my hands that makes me feel like I'm really living. It's just, just so fun. I, I absolutely love it. And not only is it something that I really enjoy doing myself, but it's also replacing something in our household that is unhealthy, which is store-bought candles. This recipe is coming to you just in time for Christmas, so you can make candles to burn in your home and enjoy for the holidays and just bring a really cozy, wonderful feel to this winter. Or you can give them as gifts. They make really, really wonderful gifts. One of the main reasons that I started making candles originally was to be able to stop buying store-bought candles. Store-bought candles are surprisingly bad for you, if you didn't know. I didn't even know candles could be bad for you. I thought they just burned and they weren't like by you, I thought it was like no big deal. But actually, most candles from the store are made out of paraffin wax, which creates highly toxic carcinogens and releases them into the air. They're actually the same fumes that are in diesel fumes. Paraffin fumes have actually been found to, to cause tumors in the livers and kidneys of lab animals, which is really scary. And that's probably what it's doing to us while we sit in our home burning a candle, because it's just releasing into the air and your whole family is smelling it and it's not good. So not only is it important to me for my family's health and removing as many toxins as I, can, as I can from my home, but it's also pretty easy to make your own candles. Not to mention being really fun. They don't even really have to be scented. There's just really a really simple process. Honestly, most of the time I don't even scent them because it would require so many, so much essential oil that it's more worth it to just diffuse essential oils and just and then avoid, enjoy your candle burning separately. So anyway, that is enough about the why and let's get right into this recipe. So I wanted to mention that I will link the blog post down below with the printable recipe card so you can always have these instructions and recipe in your cookbook and really easy, easily accessible when you make these again. But let's get into what you need for this. You will need one pound of beeswax and don't worry I will also link all of these supplies down below so they're really easy, easily accessible. They're also linked in the blog post but I always do a lot of research in finding the best products for stuff like this and then also the best price. So the, the stuff below is what I actually buy for us and it's the best price that I could find for the best quality product. You're going to need a half a cup of coconut oil. The coconut oil is optional, but it helps the candle burn longer, so I always add it to my candles. You can also optionally add a couple chunks of cocoa butter. And adding these gives it a wonderful, like, chocolatey smell. That way you can actually easily scent it without using a bunch of essential oils. So as long as I have cocoa butter on hand, I always add it because it's, it's my favorite. And of course, if you're going to use essential oils, you will need about 30 to 50 drops of whatever blend or single essential oil that you're going to use. You're going to need various jars or bases. That's another thing I really love about making your own candles is you can really customize what you actually put the candles in, which is super cool because I love to go thrifting and find all sorts of little jars and vases and pitchers and teacups and canisters and like you can use ceramic or metal or glass like whatever you want. So it's like so cool that you can put it in really special containers and things that really are extra pretty and make you extra happy. As long as it's something that's not plastic, it's gotta be heat resistant. So you don't want something that's gonna melt when you light the candle. You don't want something that's got a narrow top and it's really long because as it gets further and further in there, you're not gonna be able to light the wick. And it's also not gonna have as much oxygen getting to the flame, so it just won't work out super well. But when I make this recipe, I can usually fill about two containers that are about pint size, and then one container that's about a half pint size. So just keep that in mind when you're deciding what containers to use. I normally have more than I actually need, just, just in case, because it's a bummer to get to the time to pour the candles and you don't have enough containers. You'll need candle wicks, and I will link my, the ones I use below because there are a lot of options for candle wicks and it can get kind of confusing, but the ones that I've been using, I really like. You'll want some tape and some clothes pins or pencils. Okay, so that is all what you need, and let's get into actually making this. You're gonna add the beeswax and coconut oil and the cocoa butter if you're using it to a double boiler. I always just use a glass bowl that's sitting inside a stainless steel pot that has water in it. I always use the same bowl for all of my beeswax stuff because if you didn't know, beeswax is actually really hard to clean out of stuff, so I never wash this bowl. I just use this for all of my beeswax product stuff and 
so then I don't have to wash it and it's really nice. If you're using a block of wax, you'll have to kind of cut it off as you weigh it and get the proper amount. I really enjoy using pallet beeswax. It's just easier to measure for me and I find that it's usually cheaper too. So you can turn the burner on medium or medium high and bring the temperature up and start to melt all the wax and oils. The point of a double boiler is to bring the oils up to temperature more slowly so you don't damage the oils. While the beeswax and coconut oil and butter are melting, you can prepare your containers. Gather up all the little containers that you've collected from thrift, thrift stores or mason jars or whatever. If you're using something that's extra wide, you'll probably have to use do three wicks in a triangle pattern, but for something that's kind of like I don't know, mason jar size, you only have to use one wick in the center. So now this next step is definitely, definitely makes it easier so that the wick doesn't move when you pour the beeswax in. And we're going to try to attach the wick to the bottom of the container that you're using. So they make actual like wick tape that you can, it's like double sided, you can stick it to the, to the bottom of the wick and then to the inside of the jar. You can also use hot glue. I actually don't have either of those things, so I just use some scotch tape and fold it over on itself and that helps it stick enough so that the, it doesn't move. I mean, it works fine. It's not technically what you're supposed to be using. I've actually used nothing before and just after it's in, you can kind of reposition it and then use a clothespin to help hold it centered in the top and that's worked fine. It's just a little bit more risky. So yes, I use a clothespin in the center where the coils are. You can kind of put the, the wick through that part and then it holds it steady, which is awesome. You can also use a pencil and you wrap the wick around it and then the pencil just sits on the edges of the jar and that works really well too. I find that the clothespin is absolutely the easiest way, it just works so well. Okay, once the beeswax and oil has melted, you can take it off the burner and now is the point where you would add essential oils if you're going to. And again, you're going to add 30 to 50 drops of essential oils and that is a lot. And it's more cost effective to run a diffuser of course, if you want to use essential oils, that's just fine. You can pick whatever blend you would like. In the blog post, I have some different blend ideas, so make sure you go check that out if you're wanting to add essential oils. Now we are going to pour the wax into the candle containers. So this part can be a little bit risky, and so I like to actually pour the wax, the melted wax, into a Pyrex dish because it actually has an actual pouring spout, so it's not as hard to like try to aim into the little jar with this huge bowl, it, that could be quite risky and spill everywhere and that would be really bad. Unless you are super skilled, which I am not. This wax mixture also hardens really fast because the melting point of beeswax is really high so as soon as you take it off the burner especially when you pour it into a pyrex dish that's not as warm as the bowl it's going to start hardening to it so i actually like to have my oven preheated up to 350 degrees so when it hardens i can actually stick the pyrex dish or the bowl into the oven and it will remelt it for me after you've poured the wax mixture into the jars it's going to take about five to ten minutes for it to set up completely and then you can trim your candle wick to about half an inch tall and now I wanted to mention here that it's better to cut it too long than too short because you're going to always cut a little bit more off. If it's too long, you'll start to kind of like spark and fizzle and not be like a normal candle flame. Then you can blow it out, cut it down a little tiny bit more and then try again. But if you cut it too short, it won't ever have like a full like candle flame. So it'll just be this really tiny little flame. It'll kind of burn down the candle in this tunnel and won't like ever get stuff on the sides, in which this has happened to me before, so don't make this mistake because it's sad when that happens. And then now they are ready to light and it's just so exciting to light a candle for the first time. I don't know why it's like always, it's still so exciting. Like I'm always surprised for some reason when homemade candles actually light and it's, it's very exciting for me. I don't know why. So I hope you guys enjoyed this recipe and don't forget to go check out the blog post and these make some really, really great gifts or just a really great thing to cozy up your own home and I hope you guys really enjoy this. Thank you for watching this video and I will see you in my next one. Bye!